Make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with class content. So one of the things that you need to know for the state test at the end of the semester is Jefferson's 1802 letter. So what is that? Well first, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter in 1802. Why did he write that letter? Well, he wrote the letter because first, the Baptist in Danbury, Connecticut, wrote to him at the end of 1801. And the reason they wrote to him is they wanted to complain that their religious freedom was not being considered a natural right in the state of Connecticut. Connecticut at the time had an official state church, and they recognized their state church as having priority, but other churches, such as the Baptists, could have some religious freedom, but it was considered a favor that the state was giving them, allowing them religious freedom. Baptists, historically, from the very beginning, have always been very staunch or uh, firm advocates for religious freedom. They believe that religious freedom is a natural right, and so they wrote to Thomas Jefferson, partly complaining about the state of Connecticut, but also asking him what his attitude would be about religious freedom. Because Jefferson, even back in 1801, was known for not being a Christian and not really thinking very highly of Christianity. So they wanted to know, as a newly elected president, what was his intention for religious freedom. So that was the context. That's why Jefferson wrote his letter. He was writing back to the Baptist churches in Danbury, Connecticut. And here's what he said. You don't need to memorize this. I'm just going to go through the important part of his letter and explain it to you. And then at the end, I'll tell you the part you definitely need to know. So he begins, well, in the letter. He says, believing with you, which means, right off the bat, he's saying, I agree with you, the Baptist churches. Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or worship. So the Baptist churches for 200 years had been very staunch advocates for religious freedom, arguing that every person is individually accountable for their beliefs between them and God and to nobody else. They're ultimately only accountable to God. And he says, I agree with that. I agree that people only have to explain their religious beliefs to God himself. And that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. So that government can regulate our actions but not our beliefs. So it's not the role of government, it's not the power of government to tell you what you need to believe about God. Only regulating actions like don't steal, don't kill. So here's Jefferson saying, I agree with you, I agree with you on religious freedom, that every person is individually accountable only to God, does not have to explain their religious beliefs to anybody else, and that government should not interfere in religious beliefs, opinions, but only in actions. And he says, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So he's saying he respects the First Amendment of the Constitution, which says that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So he's saying, I believe in the religious freedom that's exemplified in the First Amendment of the Constitution. And then he adds, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. Now here's the important part of the letter, this phrase, wall of separation between church and state. Now the interesting thing here is he says at the beginning, believing with you in separation of church and state. Because this phrase, separation between church and state, was actually a Baptist phrase 200 years before this. A Baptist, Roger Williams, he was the first Baptist in America, founded the state of Rhode Island, founded the first Baptist church in America. He had written a lot about religious freedom and he had used the phrase separation of church and state. So Jefferson is actually paraphrasing a Baptist writer to the Baptist to say, I agree with you that government should not interfere with religion, and religion should not control the government. There is a separation between church and state. And that phrase became very important later on in American legal processes. It becomes important in the 1947 Supreme Court case, Everson v. New Jersey. You don't have to memorize this Supreme Court case. But in order to understand why the 1802 letter is important, it's good to know a little bit of the background. 
1947, there's a Supreme Court case. New Jersey was using public money, taxpayer money, to provide school busing. And they also provided school busing for Catholic schools, private schools, okay? Someone took that to court and said public money shouldn't be used to bus people to Catholic schools. The state argued they provide busing to schools. They don't care whether it's a Catholic school or a public school or a Protestant school or anything like that. They're just treating everybody equally. Well, somebody said, nope, you are providing a benefit to a religious group. And it went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the state. They affirmed that the state could, in fact, provide busing for even private schools. And in their Supreme Court decision, here's what they said. The First Amendment has erected a wall between church and state. They're borrowing that phrase from Thomas Jefferson, who borrowed it from Roger Williams. That wall must be kept high and impregnable. We could not approve the slightest breach. New Jersey has not breached it here. So the Supreme Court was saying New Jersey did not break the wall between church and state. But the key part here is that this Supreme Court case used the phrase wall between church and state, which they got from Thomas Jefferson. And then that idea of separation of church and state became hugely important in American politics. If you pay attention to religious freedom arguments, people will often talk about separation of church and state. That was not used in American life before this 1947 case. It only goes back to the 1802 letter, which was basically forgotten between 1802 and 1947. But then it was brought into the Supreme Court case and became an important phrase in American legal doctrine, separation between church and state. Today, that 1947 case just used that phrase in that one case, but now it's become an important idea that's argued about a lot. Some other cases we'll talk about in just a minute, minute. But first, if you pay attention to debates on this, sometimes people even debate, does it matter what Thomas Jefferson believed at all? Because Jefferson was ambassador to France when the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were written. So some people argue, who cares what Thomas Jefferson thought about the First Amendment? Because he wasn't involved in creating it. Other people argue that he was involved in the Virginia Bill of Rights and religious freedom debates before that. So there's a debate about whether or not his opinion even matters at all. But the fact is, the Supreme Court has used his opinion, so legally it matters. But today, some of the more recent cases where it's come up is something like, can a public war memorial have a cross on it? There was a, a local government that had a monument to war veterans, and it had a cross. And somebody said, well, that's supporting Christianity over other religions, therefore it violates separation of church and state. And it went to the Supreme Court. So they have to argue about that. Can a high school football coach have a prayer before a game? That and lots of similar cases have gone to the Supreme Court and they argue, does that violate separation of church and state or not? Can state scholarships such as Bright Futures pay for you to go to a religious college? Or can a state say, you can use state scholarships to go to college, but you can't use it to study religious um, majors? So these are all cases that have gone to the Supreme Court arguing over this First Amendment, religious freedom, and the concept of separation of church and state, which all goes back to the 1802 letter with Thomas Jefferson. So when it comes to the end of the semester and you take the state test, if they ask you anything about Thomas Jefferson's 1802 letter. What you need to know is that his letter outlined the concept of separation of church and state and is therefore important in the religious freedom history of America. It's become an important political phrase. Supreme Court argues about it a lot and it all goes back to his 1802 letter written to the Connecticut, Danbury Associ uh, Connecticut Baptist Association uh, in Danbury. Any questions?